Hey man, so I'm gonna try to keep this relatively short. Um, I completely agree with you about um, the the way that our our legal system punishes people when, in reality, um, say in the case of uh, pedophilia, in the case of drug addiction, um, in the case of people with with anger issues, these can all be traced to physiological or chemical abnormalities or imbalances in their brains or you know in the uh, hormonal system of the whole body even and so to punish them or to seek retribution uh, for something they have done no matter how horrible is kind of uh, it's just it's a delusion on the part of the justice system and society to do so um, and for instance, by arresting drug users, especially nonviolent drug users, uh, and putting them in prison, we're not doing them a favor or the society a favor because we're spending, you know, tons of money to punish them. Um, and in so doing, we're turning them into hardened criminals because they're in prison, um, learning from other criminals how to hate society and, and how to, um, you know, become more violent and so forth. So, in that respect, acknowledging the, de the degree to which some human behaviors are determined is important, and I agree with you. Um, but let's try to naturalize this whole picture. Instead of talking about free will and determinism in strictly human terms, let's just talk about nature or life, biological systems in general. Um, obviously, organisms are self-determining, um, contrary to what behaviorism thought in the, you know, beginning half of the uh, 20th century. Organisms are not stimulus response machines. There is something going on on the inside. There is a degree of interpretation, and organisms respond intelligently to their environments. They communicate and exchange signs with their environment. They do not just uh, passively react. Um, and so when we zoom out even further and just look at nature as a whole, um, I don't think it's accurate, even in the strictest of scientific terms, to describe it as a deterministic system. Um, quantum theory is non-deterministic. Uh, even in the case of, say, you know, David Bohm's interpretation or other you know, interpretations contrary to the Copenhagen interpretation. Um, the degree of, of determinism is always tempered by the fact that the observer, the experimenter, must interfere with that which he is trying to measure. And so uh, the feasibility of actually deriving the laws of any particular determined system and thereby being able to predict exactly how it will behave is it's it's not feasible because uh, to measure we must interfere and so you never get an objective view of, of the system regardless of whether or not you assume it to be determined or, or spontaneous um, but then even out of quantum theory you've got chaos theory and complexity theory where you know things like the butterfly effect come into uh, into into play uh, in that the smallest most minute difference at one level can become huge hugely significant at, at another level. And to account for this, we can no longer treat such systems as determined. Um, so from my perspective, what, what nature does is take habits. And this is the semiotic perspective as well. Um, nature doesn't have laws, determined laws. It takes habits. And it doesn't know, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen next, what new novel habits uh, will be created by our continual activity here. Uh, and this is especially the case in human societies. It's such a complex degree of interaction uh, between systems that uh, there's just no way of knowing what direction we're going to go in. Um, and that's the kind of freedom I want to preserve, not this sense of an individual with an ego that can control their actions and therefore must be held responsible and punished and so forth when they transgress upon social norms. Uh, you know, certainly a society must deal with that in some way, but I think rehabilitation 
is better than punishment or retribution, which, the, you know, that's just asinine as far as I'm concerned. So I agree with you there. Um, but there is a degree of novelty in nature itself, um, a degree of non-determinism, of creativity that we can't account for um, through uh, a determined type description. That's what I'm trying to preserve. Um, and I'm not sure if you'll disagree with this construal of, of freedom, um, because again, I'm not suggesting individuals have this this transcendental free will, this, you know, ego that, that drives their body around or anything. I, I reject that as quickly as you do. Um, but I'm, I'm saying together, we as a society, um, by exchanging meanings and communicating, we do affect the future. And nature as a whole is so non-determined uh, that it's just completely uh, up in the air as far as what the future holds. Um, for this earth, for the universe, it doesn't even know what it's doing. And yeah, I know I'm anthropomorphizing there, but you, you get what I'm saying. Um, so the fact that it doesn't know what it's doing, it seems to imply that it's it's not free, but it, 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 it may uh, be construed in that sense, but nor is it determined. Um, it's just this continual creation built on, you know, the scaffolding of old habits that we interpret as laws in reductionistic, materialistic, you know, physical science, but, you know, if the Big Bang cosmology is true, that needs to be reinterpreted. They're habits. Nature changes its laws as it evolves, because it is creative. So, um, you know, let me know what you, what you think of this. Maybe I wasn't explaining my position clearly enough, but um, thanks again for your, uh, your response. Take it easy.